blank page. Hello. Monday. Self quarantine stream. Got a blank page. Very little plan. Um, but I think I'm going to start with some oxalotl because uh, my amuse yourself thought exercise since sometime yesterday has been planning an oxalotl polydaria that I can neither afford nor upkeep. So, you know, thought I might carry on with that just for fun. Because, uh, because it's amusing me for the most part is why. So, you know, for the moment, just having some fun drawing oxalotl, then maybe I'll draw a paludarium and plan a waterfall and, uh, and where the plants go. And talk about my, <laughs> my cold water paludarium oxalotl research. All done with Google. and my questionable ability to decide which, which websites are lying to me. And my cat is shouting at me and I don't know why. I hope everyone is well and safe and uh, stay at home. I have not left the house in a week. I've gone into the yard, but but that's all that seems far too small. But, uh, but I'm kind of okay with not leaving the house for the most part. I could use more exercise, but. Otherwise, I'm pretty much okay just staying home and enjoying the outdoors by gardening on my deck. So I started watching terrarium videos on YouTube and that's what happened. <laughs> that's how I learned the word paludarium, which by the way, spell check does not believe is a word, which is driving my dyslexic brain crazy because it's used to not trusting my judgment about how words are spelled because it's so often incorrect. But when spell check is like, this is not a word, and I'm like, but, but it definitely, it's definitely a word. I checked. Sorry, it went quiet because I was trying to figure out why my cat was screaming. <laughs> and, uh, and apparently he's just feeling silly and walking around the house talking to himself. So, you know, cool. That's fine. 
that's how he wants to be. That's okay. It's just weird because he's old, so it's not a common occurrence. My cat is being silly. So, oxalotl fins. So the thing I'm trying to figure out about the paludarium that I'm not going to build is uh, if Cape Sundew can deal with living in a paludarium. They do really obnoxiously well outside because uh, they're temperate bog plants. So my main concern is that there will actually be too many nutrients for them in a populated sort of paludarium tank where they're getting their water supply from sort of like the filtered oxalotl tank. That it might be too nutrient rich for them. Yeah, see, that's what I'm saying. It, but he shouldn't have the zoomies. He's 15. <laughs> it's a nap time. He's not, oh, you know what it is? There's no sunshine, so he has no motivation to nap. It's cloudy today, so he has to find something else to occupy himself. And that thing he's chosen is running around the house screaming to himself. Which is fine. Just as long as he's not mad. I was a little offended that he was trying to get me to give him different food. But apparently he's just bored. So that's okay. It's not giving me any viewing numbers and it's not okay. I'm just going to cover this window because it's not working properly and it's making me want to continuously check OBS to see if things are, are functioning. So we'll just, uh, We'll just hide it completely. So there. I don't know if my new streaming schedule will stick, but we're trying it. I should probably stream earlier in the afternoon, but um, But I've been sort of sleeping until like 2.30 and then having to catch up on work plans. Making it impossible to stream at 3 p.m. Okay. Oxalotl. This is the oxalotl that's going this is one of the oxalotl that we will put in this paludarium. Let's do another. This one. This one will be a front view because they look cute that way. Let's see. Oh my goodness, it's a picture of baby oxalotl. They look very silly. Okay. Let's see. That seems good. Hi, Hannah. How's it going? It's uh, so far a pretty quiet day. Ow. Broken footstool. <laughs> okay, the second oxalotl that's going in our imaginary paludarium. Uh, while I'm drawing him, you guys name the first one. Wow. 
what should Trevor okay cool Trevor 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 Lottle is hard to say Should be tr Trevelottle, not Trevelottle. Trevelottle. That's why he goes by Trevor. I see. It's a shortened version of his actual name. For simplicity's sake. just smushed things into axolotls and posted one day. Blog a lot. Excellent. It sounds like a plan to me. <laughs> We're still... Oh, Reverse Mermaid was a great project. Um, for those not aware, although I think that everyone watching is now like my personal friend, but uh, if you missed it, if you missed it, you should you should look at the Reverse Mermaids. They're horrifying and amazing. Just. The most terrible thing you'll ever, you'll ever look at. <laughs> Child wonders what, oh, that's beautiful. I love the idea of like a little kid being like, but mommy, is it a boy, is it a boy fish person or a girl fish person? All right. Why are you defaulting to the bad lasso tool Photoshop? Well, you know, let's let's hope they aren't looking to the fish person for help with their with their gender. That's not the best that's not the best place to to go for for your questions. Yeah, I feel like when you're under three, your gender is like whatever is most convenient. <laughs> nightmare, nightmare fuel part of resume. That's that's an. I, I just, I love the idea that there's somewhere like a LinkedIn endorsement that's like, gave me nightmares 10 out of 10 would hire again. <laughs> just like out of context. It's like, but wait, what gave you what? <laughs> Oh, let's see. Okay, hang on. I need to I need to make sure that we remember. This is Trevor. This is Trevor. A lot tall. <laughs> Yeah, I I should be better about like Photoshop file management and like layer names and stuff. I'm good at it if I know that other people will see my Photoshop document, but 
when I'm streaming or it's just me. It's a hot mess. I'm just like, nah, whatever. Layer 355 seems fine. Yeah, I feel like I feel like naming and grouping layers in Photoshop is the is the sort of the artist equivalent of comment your code. Uh, or like, so I was working on a really sort of short notice project last night. Um, when I turned it in, I sent a little note that was just like, hey, so it was Rush, so uh, I didn't care about symbol names, sorry. <laughs> it's ev everything's a mess. And my director was like, yeah, well, I didn't really name the symbols when I was making the art either, so it's fine. <laughs> because like, like layers, uh, Adobe Animate will name a symbol, you know, symbol and a number automatically unless you change it which is the fastest way to like it's just if you're in a real rush you can just hit enter and have a symbol and not care about the name but it means that you'll never be able to find anything later in your library oh no i haven't saved my photoshop document thank you Hannah. this is why you're the moderator <laughs> also because you know how to use twitch two reasons Those are those those are my reasons. They feel like they feel like good ones. Ooh, new channel pages. I don't know what that means. <laughs> oh. Oh, that's actually that's that's helpful. Yeah, I gotta say, from a graphic design standpoint, my stream page uh, without a stream on it is a little bit... Eh. Why? Ooh. A built-in schedule. You mean my page could look less like a hot mess of things I just thought people might want to know? <laughs> How exciting. Maybe. Just, I'm, I'm essentially just relying on, on Twitter. Although, uh, although who knows how well that's working. Uh, there's just no red number for me on Twitch today, so I don't know what's going on. Twitch has decided it does not need me to know these things. <laughs> yeah, I, uh... So I like some of the options for sort of building your page on Patreon, but, but, and it's kind of a big, but, um, I hate that it's so unintuitive to like try and see your page the way anyone using your Patreon would. Like, I just, I need to see what, what my patrons see. I want to know how to set it up for them. Just like, why is it always different for me? Okay, about, about done with this guy or girl. I don't know, maybe they're a couple. Um. Let's see, this one, this one, that one's gonna be, let's, let's have some fun with. Ah, you may be flawless, Valkyrie, but do you comment on your code? Um, so let's, let's do, let's do some silly color um, while you name the smiley one. The smiley one's gonna be naturally colored 
the sort of brown speckle. <laughs> Go to self-documenting. Oh, is it though? Um, so let's see. We're gonna we're gonna do. That sort of nice, natural, natural brown for this one. What is this one's name? Let's, let's, it's a she, I think. This, this one's a lady. Um, cause why not? Cause why not give Trevor a partner in our imaginary, so we could have baby oxalato in our imaginary paludarium. So it's Trevor and Lucinda, Peggy, Maria, Lucinda Lottle, yeah, okay, that, that, that's, that's a solid, that works, that's a solid choice. Lucy, yes, exactly. Okay. Now let's see, where is it? It's darker around the face. And then Hand, hands McGee. Hello, figments made. Welcome, welcome to uh, to Sarah with T streams. Uh, streams about how she wants an oxalotl paludarium. <laughs> Welcome to the Oxalotl Wishful Thinking stream. Uh, we've just named them Tr Trevor Alotl and Lucinda Alotl. Uh, these are these are the inhabitants of our imaginary Oxalotl enclosure. Just, you know. Hello, Auntie. It's time for Oxalotl Enclosure Adventures. Sometimes you need a, a, an imaginary hobby. And mine turns out to be paludariums. Oh, don't worry, we're gonna get, we're gonna get to the plants. I'm just, uh, I'm coloring them because it's important to me that everyone knew that one of them was, was, um, the natural spotty color. So, you know. Okay, and then this one. Uh, uh, leucistic, not albino, I think. Just, just because. So let's see, they've got like a, a sort of almost purple going on around the, around the gills. Well, that's the irony, isn't it? Because because Lucinda because Lucinda is brown. <laughs> oh no. The genetics the genetics didn't work out. Um, so yeah, I, I watched a bunch of YouTube videos about 
about making paludariums and terrariums. And uh, I don't know if I talk about it that often while I stream, but I have a garden with a bog and a bunch of carnivorous plants. Hello uh, to Frequa. Um, so I'm, I'm already kind of obsessed with plants. I have quite a lot of plants. So, uh, so the idea of, um, of enclosures for for oxalotl that that included the terrarium of plants was just too much fun to not explore. Okay. Just a general general blush of, of pink throughout. There we go. Yes! Aha! Oxalotyl emote. Perfect. Perfect. It's so good that you've arrived with the with the oxalotyl emote because we've just we've just uh, we've just started. There we go. That's better. Okay, wait. I have to go back to. I have to name Lucinda. I forgot to write Lucinda's name down. Can't have that. Lucinda a lot all. Good. So. Hello, they might be scientists. So this is, this is Trevor and Lucinda. Um, we're going to design a home. For Trevor and Lucinda. So, I'm thinking so because you need you need some verticality, but then like you know, this is sort of the water level, and then there's like. A kind of a shelf on it because oxalotl don't like bright light but plants do so if there's gonna be like a light here um, you know for for the for the plants then we need to make sure that the uh, the oxalotl has some so like there's some open water in the front Overhead view. So like it, it's like this, except that there's water under here. <laughs> oh no, the 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 oxalotl the oxalotl puns. So, so this is kind of the the i the overhead the overhead view idea. So there's there's kind of a a waterfall here coming down, and then this is like terrestrial plants kind of bog stuff here and here, but it's a shelf, so it's sort of hold. Then we can have like water plants here on the surface, and then then water plants there. A little lot of latte. Oh dear, everything's a lot in chat now. Okay, so and then I feel like it should have some kind of like like driftwood thing going on. I don't know, just because that sounds like it would be fun. For an oxalotl. So 
so. Have some driftwood. Just a kind of doesn't need a double glory line. There we go. And then maybe some some larger stones. Then like a little a little sort of not quite not quite cave going on here. You know, for for some for some hiding. Because we want our oxalotl to feel safe. All of my driftwood looks like bird's feet. Uh, probably a coincidence. <laughs> probably fine. Revisiting your earlier joke. Okay. So let's see. Let's... A waterfall, like, coming out, like, maybe here. And we don't want a whole lot, because we don't want it to be too high or we'll get too much water flow. And we want it, we want it to kind of be breaking on surface rather than falling directly into the water. Because we don't want to disrupt the oxalol. Yeah, in the, in the wild, habitat destruction is, is the biggest oxalotl problem. So, so there's some, some rocks making up this waterfall. Probably you can buy rocks to do this. I I did not research types of rocks, <laughs> so so I don't know. Maybe like pumicey stones, not shale. I think because that's too flat. But you know, a little, a little waterfall coming down over some rocks. Some more driftwoody, branchy things. Because, you know, why not? Yeah, I mean, there has to be. Why, why would I build a crazy pallet area if I'm there's not going to put a waterfall in it? Um, I think we'll hide the filter back here behind the behind the cave, behind this thing. Maybe over here, maybe over here. Behind the cave, we'll we'll hide the filter. Here-ish, maybe. Oh, it needs a filter. And you know. If you're gonna have it's a little place to plant plants there. Just feels like if you're gonna if you're gonna go ahead and build a whole tower of of plants and and rocks, you might as well might as well go for it and have a waterfall. Love. Yeah, it's it's the uh, it's the exploding the exploding waterfall mountain. 
Okay, let's see what else. Something over here. Another another branch maybe. Put ourselves. Some more driftwoody stuff. Plants can go up here. Okay, so. Now we have, now we have uh, a waterfall and some rocks. Now we can put plants in <laughs> because, uh, okay, so this is sort of the top of the, oops, shift key, there we go. So, I'm gonna Google. I think I spelled that wrong. Plant ping. Ah, I did it. Ping you ping -wicula. So there's a, a carnivorous plant. It's tropical butterwort. I'm wondering what the temperature it needs is. So I'm just going to go. To, oh, temperate there. Temperate, we'll look for temperate. That makes sense. Because they flower, you see, and it's neat. Um, uh, they, don't, they don't have any. Okay, fine. That won't explain care to me. Mexican, warm, warm temperate, maybe warm temperate. Okay, there's a warm temperate. What do you need? Warm temperate ping, pingricula. Oh, 28 degrees to 100 degrees. Well, that's all of the degrees. Should be fine. Um, always sitting in at least two inches of distilled or purified water. Best grown in a bog garden. So it might, it still might not like. Have I saved recently? I saved when I finished the oxalot. I will save what is here now. So. So those might, they might, they're for the, oh, apparently the coast there is Florida and Louisiana. So they, they might, they might manage the thing, oxalot or cold water tank. Well, cold, I mean, you know, room temperature. But so the thing is, just to give you an idea, um, the, the tropical ones are just really fun because they bloom all kinds of fun violet looking blooms. But I don't know if they'll work in our, in our, in our setup. Our imagine our imaginary. 50 to 90 degrees, so not, not bad. Um, they have a winter succulent phase. They're supposed to dry out some. That's probably a problem. But I don't know. We could try. Yeah, they're 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 really attractive blooms, um, and you can kind of wedge. I've seen them sort of wedged into like pumice stones and things, um, as as decorative displays. I'm gonna look up. I'm just gonna look up displays, see if I can find. Yeah, that's that's what I'm. So, like, uh, there's, there's, yeah, there's a bunch of them on, on rocks that has potential. 
sort of sort of this kind of thing on a rock on a rock that feels like it it has potential Ooh, on a rock so you know so there's that so so what if I'll just make a new layer what if down here we do so like maybe there's this sort of stone here and down here we do some Drosera Cape Sundew um, if you were watching my Twitter you know that Cape Sundew self propagate and I have approximately a thousand of them they fill every pot even when something else is in the pot they just reproduce like mad Ooh, more oxalotal emotes that's awesome a tiny um I, well, one day, again, I'll be able to fire ceramics, but uh, I, I am a ceramic sculptor. I can put literally whatever I want at the bottom of my imaginary paludarium because I can make it for myself. I can put an oxalotl, uh, I can put a ceramic oxalotl in my oxalotl paludarium. Um, and then they, they bloom, they bloom these... Uh, these sort of crests of flowers that are really nice. So we'll put some of those here. Okay, I have to Google, I have to Google that, they might be scientists. What? What am, that is not, that's not. There we go. Oh, yes. Yes, technically, technically I could. In fact, that's even kind of the plan. Um, although, small. A small Aztec temple. That's that's fair. A sunken a sunken Aztec. Okay, wait. Um, Aztec oxalot Zolotl. is the god associated with both lightning. Okay, hang on. Why? Oh, this this artist made a thing, and it's and it's beautiful. Piper Piper draws, made that I've accidentally found an amazing oxalotl. I will. I'll just so. I'm trying to figure out. Well, this is pretty great. I followed into an Aztec temple research hole. Um, and I found a, a, a amazing Quetzalcoatl head. Oh yeah, um, Mona Robot on Twitter does, uh, oh good, there's a link, yeah, does uh, amazing sort of Aztec style glyphs of things, just all kinds of things. It's especially great.
I'm trying to figure out what kind of Aztec temple ruin goes goes with the axolotl. And and I'm 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 kind of I'm kind of thinking it should be it should be this this really good. Hmm. Although there's a there's a just a yeah, really a really good just Quetzalcoatl like block. You know, like a right. I'll draw again. Sorry, <laughs> God, I got distracted. Um, so like here, here, kind of, kind of naturally coming out of the background is a. Uh, is like a really. A really good sort of toothy toothy Quetzalcoatl here. If you are unfamiliar with Quetzalcoatl, he is the feathered serpent. Aztec mythology. Oh, no, they're shutting down the dorms here on campus, but the lab PhD student has to be in the dorms because we have this his thesis going on. Oh yeah, that's actually been quite quite a thing is students being being told uh well hey. Uh we're closing down student housing and students being like, um but this is where I live. I don't have another place to go. That's been quite an issue. Ah, uh, yes, PhD students, grad students, not quite employees, not quite students. So, so you know, like a really, just a really good Quetzalcoatl peeking out there in the background. Just, uh, I'm going to clean up around there. Yep, yep, there we go. Just a, a sneaky Quetzalcoatl <laughs> hiding in the background, peeking out from behind this root. Um, and then sort of on this rock back, so we've got sort of the Drosera going on in here in the foreground, and then some moss, of course, because moss. And then back here we can have the, the Pinguicula. Um, and they're sort of, they're violet blooms. And this way, they're on a, a rock where their, where their water intake can be better controlled. So they can get a little bit less water in sort of the the depths of the winter. Because supposedly this should just be a tank that stays at like cool room temperature. So let's let's see, another 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 Dracera here, just because because maybe they won't self propagate inside. I don't know. 
Okay. Now on this side, probably we want to balance it. So we want like another, another Dracera. The reason, so I'm a little bit worried there's too much nutrients for the Dracera, but they are at the hardiest of unkillable creatures compared to other Bach plants so far. So I feel like, you know, also I have thousands of them. So if they all die, screw it. <laughs> I had them to spare. Um, they actually need to be, they need to be cold. I might. I would usually give them away, but we are social distancing. So I guess maybe I'll just leave them in a tray by the street and be like, hey, uh, don't ring my doorbell. Stay at least six feet away from each other, but you can have some bog plants. Okay. And then moss. Because, you know, moss is good. Moss here too, obviously. Now, I can't really have a bunch of, like, tropical bromeliads and things. Because this is not going to stay that warm. Although I suppose if they're okay with my house, they're probably okay with this sort of open thing. It's, it's, it is like, stop being realistic, you're inventing a thing. That's fair, it is my, it is my imagination, and I could do what I want. Um, oops, I can, I can do what I want, but like, that's the fun of the thought experiment. Part of the fun of the thought experiment, experiment for me anyway, is like planning a thing that would work, you know, sort of trying to figure out how to make a thing that will, that would actually grow, not immediately die. It could just be that I like doing research. Um, okay, some more water plants. Let's see. Anubius is, is a good, does not need a heater water plant. Just sort of a basic, you know, a, a nice basic just what you'd expect. Looks a little bit like a peace lily. But unlike peace lilies, it won't poison your plant, it won't poison your pets. So, you know. I'll have one of those back there. Maybe a little one here. Wedge it in. You can kind of stick them to things. So. And then like one here, maybe no, well, they don't need a lot of light. Okay, yeah, like one here. Maybe, maybe there's like a mini version um, that can, that can kind of fill in the gaps here. Don't go chasing waterfalls. Ah, uh, so long ago. It's always good not to poison your imaginary friends. Um, and then, oh, what's that, that? Is it Java, Java, whatever? Hang on. Java Fern, I think it's Java Fern. Yes, it's Java Fern. Is. Is another one. <laughs> Stick to the volcanic likes that you're used to, yes. 
Don't go chasing waterfalls. Stick to the volcanic lakes that you're used to. I don't actually know if that was the right way that the song goes at all. Um, so I apologize. But, you know. So yeah, we'll just have like a nice sort of and wait sand I guess as substrate the internet the internet has surprisingly firm opinions <laughs> about uh about oxalotl uh substrate anyway we want to give them some hidey space so let's uh have one have one behind the behind the head there we go and then this is this is this is all dark and and cave like and maybe some underwater moss what kind of what kind of underwater moss Let's, I forget what Java moss is. It is, it's underwater moss. Good. Cool. Nope. That, that is definitely a thing you should not buy on eBay. Oh, anyway. Yeah, Java moss. So then we can kind of Java moss our way over some uh, some of the floor <laughs> oh no half if an oxalot will get a divorce well I mean they're gonna fight over who gets the the Quetzalcoatl head is what happens. <laughs> oh wow, your gateway drug to science, that's pretty great. It's just some mats of moss, because I like moss. Okay. Now, last thing. Saving. I saved. Um, we need floating plants. The last, the last underwater thing. We need, we need a float. We need some floating plants. Um, we need, and we need some floating plants that aren't going to take up too much space. Floating water plants for aquarium. That was better. That was a better Google choice. Let's see. Oh, good. Here's an illustration. Water lettuce, fanwort, duckweed. What is that? It does not explain. I'm going to assume it's either hyacinth or water lettuce. <laughs> ace pride colors, even, even so you can be an ace a lot. Oh, I like it. <laughs> Axe little jogging pants, so you can be a race a lot. Oh dear. Okay, so some floating plants, sort of sort of in this in this middle section because because again oxalotl did not did not want did not want a bunch of light but we want our our above water plants to get to get light so let's let's have some floaty plants they can dangle down here
so their roots will will become part of the decoration. So there we go. A nice nice underwater oxalotl environment. I want this to take up more space in my imaginary world where I have the power to make it do that. More moss. There we go. Maybe a little, a little one. Yeah. Okay. Now. <laughs> Now we need some stuff up here. And I think maybe people keep saying that you could put rabbit's foot ferns in a terrarium. And I don't know if I believe them. That's possibly because I keep trying to get one to grow and it keeps dying. <laughs> but they're nice and frilly, so maybe we should put them up here to take up some space. They've got little, little fern leaves. Just gonna cheat <laughs> because, you know, it's a lot of, it's a lot of leaves. Oops. So up here we've got the land of ferns. Because that's a lot of leaves. Okay. Nope. Stop that. Oops. Well, we'll, we'll work with what we've got. Um. Now I have don't go chasing waterfalls stuck in my head. <laughs> oh dear. Just just really stuck there. Yep, okay. I'm gonna have to. And they've got they've got little fuzzy feet that I would hope would kind of come over the edge and make a nice little decorative space. Okay. So so some ferns. Some moss. Let's see. What other what other what other terrestrial background we've got we've got our sort of bog and our like I don't know, we've got a bog and like fern mountain here. Let's put another one in the middle, because why not? What else? What else could we could we add? 
You need something kind of like here and here. I give so little and ask for so little. Oh dear. Okay. Hmm. Google temperate. That's not you spell temperate. Temperate terrarium plants. Let's see. Ooh, plants for a northern temperate vivarium. That's not helpful. Well, this is just a list of terrarium plants. Hmm. Oh, air plants. Yeah, air. Um, Taladasia are probably fine. I have a bunch of those sitting around the house. Um, I feel like I'm pronouncing Taladasia wrong, but you know. But air plants, yeah. So we could wedge some of those into the crevices. Just, just wedge some, some air plants. Tie them to the tie them to the sticks. Not too close to the water. We don't want them to, to get extra over damp. Just damp enough. You know. Oxlottle are natural predators of Poe too. That doesn't seem likely. Um, although the uh, my research tells me that oxalotl will just uh, eat eat anything you stick in there. So so that's a thing to consider. Let's see, friendship plant. Um, that's eastern. Watermelon peperomia. Oh, I have a starfish flower cactus. It's outside. Peperomia. Peperomia, sorry. Pe watermelon peperomia. Uh, HD, that's not. Um, hang on. P E P E R O M I A Peperomia. <laughs> um Nerve Plant. Um Baby's Tears Plant. Oh well this obviously this. It's called Golden Club Moss. I already like it. We'll stick some some golden club moss in there. Let me see if I can. Let's see. Likes doesn't like direct sunlight. Likes to be lightly moist at all times. Seems good. Okay. So. Figments man, you might you might you might be hungry. Yeah, that's that's so let's let's in, in like a wedge here, let's plant club moss, which is just this little, little, um, it's, but it's like a really interesting light green color. And it, it might, it spreads, so we might be able to get it to go all over, just all over this crevice that we're going to plant it in here. And then some over on this side too, of course. Club, yeah, club moss. It's brightly colored. It likes to keep things going. So yeah, we'll 
some club moss, some sort of regular boring moss. Cool. Okay. Okay, a list of, we need maybe a trip. Oh, spider wart has flowers, that's nice. Um, hey, look, this thing says air plants too. African violets, I haven't had an African violet in a long time. I could have African violets. They don't mind. Okay, let's let's put maybe an African violet by here by the uh, by the waterfall. Just nestled right in. Stick another another air plant to our to our driftwood. I mean, it's feeling it's feeling pretty full. Yeah, we're 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 co-opting we're co-opting the, the the violets. Okay, let's see. High humidity and low light, low growing, good base for the plants. Hmm. I need something that trails, you see, I think. So let's trailing terrarium plants. Just asking Google questions at this point. Um, not pothos, um, because they're bad for cats. Well, now I have, now I have the, the New England herp, pediculture, herpiculture, herpticulture website going on here. There's tiger striped vine. Boliv Bolivian wandering. Oh, this one has potential. Let's, let's figure out. Catananth Devocena. Do, do, do. Probably needs to be too warm. High humidity and low to medium amounts of light. It's tropical South America. Okay, too, too warm. Okay, what about creeping fig? Even warmer. Although technically, I suppose your house is like zone 11. I don't know. Mine gets pretty cold. Hmm. Okay. For now, we're just gonna, just gonna invent we're just going to put trailing plants in without knowing what they are is what's going to happen. We're just going to we're just going to make stuff up. Because I feel like we need to to just we need to have you know we need to have vines. Ooh, I wonder I wonder if I could keep my and it probably probably would be too wet. I have a string of hearts plant that has a bunch of due to a catastrophe that ripped off a bunch of its vines. It has a bunch of children now because you can grow a string of hearts from the nodes on its vines. So I have a bunch of, I also have, like, like Cape Sundew, I have a bunch of string of hearts. So, but they don't really like a lot of water, which makes me suspect that putting them in a terrarium is a bad idea. Um, 
Kitty, Kitty is behind me, nomming. I don't think he's coming to his cat bed today, though, because it's it's cloudy. Okay. Because I just, you know, you just I need to fill this space with something, and I, I like the idea of it being trailing vines. Okay, and some like moss. And then I feel like we can just, this is kind of, a, you know, the uneven background surface. There we go. So. So let's see, just, just for, just, just for mapping sake, here, here's our, here's our ferns. Here's our, here's our sticks. Um, here's the, the, the rock with the, uh, here's the African violet. <laughs> um, oops, that's not where the rock goes. It's incorrect. Here's, here's some club moss and a vine. Here's the African violet. This is, this is the first bog. This is the second bog. Here's the rock. And more plants. And then these are the floaty plants. Here's where that stick comes up. Floating plant. <laughs> De freak, will you have a stick? Just a stick. Where did the stick emote come from? I love it. I love that someone's like, you know what we need? A stick. There we go. This is, I'll put another like floaty. This is the sort of the landing for the, for the waterfall. Another floaty plant. Floating plants. Maybe some, some ponds, duckweed or something. And then down here, we've got the water plants. We've got that cave. We've got our, our statue. Um, so yeah, there we go. We have a plan. We have a plan for, uh, for let's, let's move, let's move Trevor and Lucinda up here and uh, and sort of alter alter our layout a little bit. There we go. So so now we have a plan. We have some options now. There's a time left on the stream uh we could uh we could go go just all the way we could we could carefully carefully ink and color this uh this imaginary tank setup we could really go for it um we could draw more oxalotl we could do hilariously complex scientific drawings of some of the plants that are in the display. We got, we got some options. Give her sticks whenever she's good. I like it. Um, so, so what do we think? Do we want to, do we want to epically ink and color this, this attractive Paladarium design. Do we want to just just draw more oxalotl for fun? Uh, do some do some plant illustration. So 
many good choices. I'm looking to you, chat, to decide. Epic inking. We got a vote for epic inking. Ep Epinking. Um, other opinions. Epic inking. Epic inking. Why have you decided to be weird, Photoshop? Oh well, it's fine. Epic inking. No one else speaks up. Thickerman's made speaks for all of you. That's the rules. Well, there we are then. Okay, so. Did I do, I think we're just, we're gonna, I think I'll go with the pencil tool still, cause I kind of, I did the oxalol that way and I want it to match. I vote present, fair enough. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, it's not gonna be sort of inking, inking, I'm gonna kind of do like, like careful pencil lines, but it's gonna be, you know, the cleaned up version of our, of our rough sketch. So, so it will be, it will be like inking, but it will match the oxalotl that we've already done and watercolored, which I think will be good. So. Give ourselves a nice detailed aquascape. Let's see. This is the Java moss, which kind of grows in little tendrils. And the Anubias tied to the, or attached to the, to the driftwood stick decoration. I don't know if it's driftwood so much as just a stick since it's in a, in a, a mountain pond with a waterfall. Yeah, because we want to, we want to, we want to watercolor it, because we watercolored the oxalotl, and uh, and then they'll match. Also, um, as they might be scientists pointed out, it's got. I like it because it has kind of like a a naturalist's journal vibe. And as a kid, I was obsessed with naturalist journals. I thought they were the just the coolest, best thing. So, having that vibe, I think, is an excellent vibe to go for. It sort of, it, it made me sad that I did not have things to go out and discover. That I was like, well, I mean, I can't, I can't do detailed, newly discovered botanical drawings of the stuff in my yard. That's, everyone knows what those are. Also, I think it's worth pointing out that the drawing skills of a drunken octopus are not zero which is a little terrifying if you think about it for too long. Okay. I feel like, I feel like this was a rock at one point, so I'm gonna make it a rock. 
because, you know, why not? I can draw diagrams. Diagrams are important. Oops. We need diagrams. The world needs good diagrams. Better infographics. Ah, hand drawing your data sheet before you put it into Excel. Ah, yes. I know that feeling. Not great with, with information digitally displayed, and I don't know why. It's, it's just a thing about myself. Just not great at like processing information, especially calendars that are displayed digitally. Do you know why? You'd think that spreadsheets would be super, super clear and obvious, but it's just easier if I write it on a piece of paper. I'm adding some leaves. Because I wanted to, really. Okay. The Java fern in the foreground. Oh, we're starting a new phase of the experiment tomorrow. Well, they might be scientists. Yes, understanding what needs doing is important. And to frequent, well, I don't know what the scale is by which we measure the skills of drunken sea creatures. I'm not even certain that, uh, that octopuses can get drunk. I don't know. I don't know how we find out. Uh, it sounds like trying to find out might not be humane. Have concerns about whether this test should be performed at all. Yeah, it feels like the Animal Ethics Board would not approve it. And in their defense, that's probably the correct decision. It does not feel like we need a scale by which to measure the intoxication of sea life. Doesn't feel like it has much application in scientific discovery in general. Although I don't know, who am I to say? Maybe someone will come up with a really good reason at some point. Oh yeah, we could definitely just let octopus draw. That would be fine. That's that's enrichment. That's just that's just good octopus fun right there. You know, like asking them to predict the outcome of soccer matches. Nothing wrong with with letting an octopus draw a picture. The criteria with which one judges an octopus's drawing skills, though, is another matter entirely. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if we have criteria. <laughs> ah. 
doesn't think chewing on people is enrichment. That seems incorrect. It feels like, it feels like being chewed on by sheep would be sheep enrichment. Oh no, the sheep petting is a trap for chewing on you. He only wanted to chew on you the whole time. But he wants, he wants to chew on you. Why would you deny, why would you deny him? Why would you deny him that joy? That's fair. Probably uncomfortable to be actually chewed on. They do have they do have some teeth and a hard upper palate for chewing. Probably unpleasant. <laughs> oh no. So it's not you he wants to chew on. It's it's the nitri the nitrile gloves? That's weird. Why would you want to chew on nitrile gloves? That sounds unpleasant. I think your sheep is weird. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what that thing is or what it tastes like as long as it's attached to a person. I don't know. That seems like questionable criteria. <laughs> ah, hat chewing. That see, hats make sense. Yeah, he's doing sheep science. He wants to. He wants to do a comparative a comparative study of all of the bits of human. In fairness, it's probably weird that all the different bits have such different textures and tastes so different. Okay. Got him. Got to put thought into the construction of my cave now. Okay, good. Some pebbles. Oh yeah, I put some moss here. Oh no, yeah, it's like different different clothes. Where have you been? What have you been doing? Human human tastes different, day thirty two. <laughs> New texture. <laughs> Very confusing. Maybe human has been sheared. Ooh, a comparative study of people. I like it. just compare a comparative study of the of the flavors of people. Okay. More background stick. Just wedged right in there.
Good, pr pretty, pretty good progress. Pretty good progress in our in our careful, our careful illustration. Yes, exactly. Prefer flavor of Thursday human to Friday human. Just, you know, comparative a comparative study. He just needs to know. For science, these things are important. Look at all of my nice, my nice aquarium plants. Such a, such a nice little imaginary paludarium. If only Spellcheck believed that paludarium was a word. That would be so helpful. Why must it make me doubt myself every time I type it? I don't understand. Okay, time for the good bit. It's time for 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 our for our friend Quetzalcoatl. Okay. Awesome. Sheep sheep like being petted quite a lot. And they've been there since November, so now they are friends. Seems seems fair. You mean you do you do bring them food? And don't really do anything mean. Seems fair to have decided that you're safe. Okay. Don't know if we're gonna have time to watercolor it at this rate. We'll see. We'll see where we can. Oops. We'll see what we can get. We'll see how far we can get. Just inking it nicely will be a good, a good start anyway. That way it will look nice next to the oxalotl. Or, as we like to call them, Lucinda and Trevor. I do so enjoy making making you guys name things. It's my it's my favorite chat interaction. Drawing a thing and being like, okay, name it. Tell me what it's called. Let's, we need, it's good, it's good Quetzalcoatl feathers here. Very important. There we go. But like a relief sculpture, I think, because 
because we don't want it to be too fragile. There we go. Ah yes, I stuck some some foliage back here. <laughs> the, the named ones. Those who name. Oh, just add some some sand texture and these are the floaty plants And they've got roots that kind of come down into the water. If the oxalotl can, can play with. I don't know if oxalotl like to play with plants or not. I know that I had at one time a goldfish tank with live plants and the goldfish just, just killed the live plants like right away. They eat them completely. And then I, I have I've had some live plants with beta, but they're they're politer with their plants because they are carnivores. And since oxalotl are carnivores, maybe they're also politer with the plants. It's okay if they just want to move them around. Just as long as they don't eat their leaves or their roots. I thought maybe I'd put some little fish in my imaginary paludarium. Then uh, the internet was like, do not, they will be eaten by your oxalotl or they will be mean to your oxalotl. There are only two options. Okay, yeah, and then this is like some, some duckweed just in case that makes sense. This is the water surface. Yeah, food or bullies. Those are those are what you those are what fish will apparently they nibble, they, they have a tendency to nibble on the, the poor oxalotl's frilly gills. It's just, how, how mean is that? I mean, I say how mean is that, but the oxalotl will eat them if they're small enough, so I guess, you know. <laughs> anyway, neither seems to be a great option. So what I decided was that this imaginary paludarium just needed more than one oxalotl. Um, and then the paludarium got significantly larger because I had to accommodate, accommodate all of the oxalotl. You know, these things happen. So, we need to have our little, this is our sort of rock ledge that is protecting the, uh, protecting the water from being too disturbed by the waterfall. We want it to fall kind of on a like protected pool first. So that's where the waterfall is coming in. Kind of give it some small rock. Just depth there. There we go. Okay. Cape Sandu. A very complicated little plant to draw because they've got little sticky fibers on each of their leaves that catch insects.
so. So yeah, Trevor, Trevor and Lucinda have sort of a mansion. Just really, really going for it with the uh, with the home decoration for Trevor and Lucinda. Still have Don't Go Chasing Waterfalls stuck in my head. Have had this whole time. <laughs> when we're done here, I'm going to have to turn on uh, Toss a Coin to Your Witcher or something to get something else like really firmly stuck in my head. You know. Under the sea. Under the sea. Yeah, hmm. No. It's okay. I can I can find a way to get it out of my head. No problem. There we go. So they bloom, they, they create this sort of drooping flower stalk and they bloom, they, bleh, they bloom from the, from the first flower around so that this flower is, these flowers are wilting when these flowers are opening. It's really interesting. Oh, God. oh well, they might be scientists solved it. Uh, thanks. That, that does answer the question of what what to get stuck in my head instead. Well, the year was 1778. I wish I was in Sherbrooke now. Letter of Mark came from the king to the scummiest vessel I had ever seen. Anyway. <laughs> ah, when in doubt, sea shanties. Obviously, sea shanties are the solution. Is that back back up back up Auntie Shep? You're not shouting quail enough then I have to I have to say. You're uh far too far too quail restrained. There you go. Gotta Got to keep up the uh, the quail pressure, in spite of the fact that obviously there's no quail. Although again, ceramic artist, so I could just I could just put quail in, um, but it feels like it might be a little weird. I don't know. Yes, bilingual bilingual quail shouting. I like it. Okay, and there's moss everywhere here because that's, cause that's green and fun. Yeah, it feels like it feels like it would be it would be bad for bad for everyone involved. But ceramic quail can basically live wherever. So you know, there's that. Just a photo of a quail stuck in there. Just like, you know. This is this is how we roll. Oh, I like I like these I like these little flowers now that I've got now that I've done like the details version where you can see their little violet shapes. A 
Excellent. Moss coming off the rock because we want it to look all natural. Can't. All right. Maybe just a photo. I'm still laughing about the photo of quail. All right. This is this is how far we've gotten. And go over here. Do and do these. Tracera. Oops. Trying to speed up the the Dracera drawing. Unfortunately, plants uh, plants are complicated and don't lend themselves to like super fast sketch lines. But it's okay. Whatever gets done gets done. And then tomorrow, I will add the schedule to the Twitch thing underneath. I neglected to, I put it on Twitter. But tomorrow we will be doing evening, evening Subnautica. Because um, I want to play Subnautica, basically. And then uh, we'll skip Wednesday. I'll host Hannah, because uh, Hannah's awesome. She streams on Wednesday night from 5 until 8, which is kind of in my my time frame for my sort of week, not Friday streams anyway. So I thought I would just host her now that I've raided now that I've raided her with all of you and uh, and dragged you dragged you along. I feel like I feel like you're prepared. I feel like I feel like you're prepared to 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 just to just join Hannah every week. There you go. <laughs> so, I'll be hosting Hannah on Wednesday. Um Thursday. I'm not sure whether I'll do art or another game day. It depends kind of how I feel and how much work has caught back up to to sort of the oh no we all work from home now IT panic <laughs> that sort of delayed everything for the last couple of weeks. As that catches itself back up. Just a very small quail. As that catches itself back up I'll have to uh to sort of reevaluate my schedule and figure out when and how much extra streaming I can fit in around a more normal things are kind of back to where they were in terms of schedule schedule um, I might just fill the sort of general holes that I would have filled with going out with streams. We'll see. We'll see what happens. I don't, I don't have a firm plan yet. But I, oops, I will, I will attempt to make one soon.
and then I will put it on the internet. But I will fix the one underneath Twitch so it tells you the actual uh, the actual times that I am streaming as opposed to I think mostly streams that have already passed at this point I, I feel like I haven't been keeping up with uh, with my actual stream page schedule air plants in here um, fun fact you do have to water air plants pretty regularly actually uh, every time someone's like I'm bad with plants I even kill air plants I'm like oh no that's not your fault you've been lied to <laughs> you have to soak them in water every week for like 15 minutes it turns out they actually need need quite a lot of of watering. You can't just spritz them once a month or so and hope for the best. They'll die. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, Figment's made. That's how for whatever reason that's how they're sold, that's like how they're pitched to people. It's like, oh you just you just stick them to a wall and then you miss them and it's fine. No, you should take them down, put them in a bowl of water and let them soak until all of the whiteness of the fuzz turns to like a green color and has absorbed all the water. Then you can put them back. Um, so when, you're, when your air plants die, it's because you've been lied to about how to take care of them. They actually, they need to absorb a, a significant amount of water. Like, not daily. You can do it, you know, like once once a week, once every couple of weeks. But you have to soak them really well. Spraying them does not give them enough water. They can't absorb it enough. Um, because they would be getting it from, like, a downpour, you know, that lasted all day. And water would pool around them and in them. Yeah. There's your... There's your fun, your fun learning fact for today. Um, I have a, I have a bunch of them, just stuck places in windows because they do the, they do truly not need any substrate. You can just stick them to things, so that part is true. So you know, I've got them wedged in like window sills and stuff. But they do need more than just misting. Okay, we've got sticks, Teledasia. I feel like I feel like let's do the African violet and then let's let's call it a day. Because those ferns are just gonna take they're gonna take some time. They're just, they're gonna, they're gonna take some time. Also, um, I had spent some time trying to find a good yellow African violet, and then all of my African violets got um, a pest, and they, like, those little mealy bug things, and they all perished, and that's sad. So this is me vicariously re-enjoying African violets. Yeah, either I'll finish it on on stream on a later on a later stream or I'll just fiddle with it later and then show it to you after the fact. But I don't want to, I like plants enough that I don't want to get them wrong. 
So I'm like being sort of overly careful with them. I want I want them to be recognizable. Oxalotl stick. Such such an excellent and I stick emoji. Sorry, still not over still not over the 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 hilariousness of stick emoji. Um. I will I will also I promise. Um, do do some some emoji. I swear I swear it's a thing that I'm gonna do. <laughs> I promise. Definitely happening. I will definitely eventually make it happen. Just have to read all of the instructions. <laughs> Just have to make sure that I know what I'm doing. Okay. Some some moss in our rock crevice and African violet. Okay. So just just tidy up the quail a little bit. There we go. Anyway, <laughs> there's a quail. Let's let's just let's put him on his own layer. I'll just give him because we'll just put him over here. Um here we are. Here's here's the beginning of the paludarium for uh, Trevor and Lucinda, the oxalotl that I have made up. I hope you guys had fun. Not the three hours that I'm 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 doing shorter. I'm gonna do all of my other stream shorter and just save the three hours for Fridays because um, I'm gonna need to make more time for actual actual projects that got put off because the world fell apart and try and get back to the point where where I have space for those um, so hope you guys enjoyed it oh yeah there, I left I left the po to here I forgot Hope you guys enjoyed being stared at by the po tooth this whole time. Um, this is this is the way I'm having fun. Is planning paludarium builds. So I hope that it was at least a little bit amusing for you guys. I think it looked. Oh, let's, <laughs> sorry. Let's move it out of the way of the po tooth. Um, I forgot. I just I. Because I had reference open this whole time, so I didn't have OBS open. So I just forgot the Potu was there. He's just been there the whole time in the corner, staring. <laughs> so I, I hope that you love him, because um, because I've just left him there. He's just part of the stream now. Um, so yeah, nice waterfall paludarium for Trevor and Lucinda. I will see you guys tomorrow for more Subnautica where we get to ideally go find some fruit. And if not, as usual, on Friday for Friday Tea Time. In the meantime, I hope you have a good night. And Trevor and Lucinda, hope you do too. And I will see you on the internet. Bye!